Hello, my name is Richard Toy, and yesterday I opened an account with Ladbrooks and I put £50 on the Leave campaign to win the EU referendum. And some of my friends have asked me, well, how did you know? And of course, I didn't know because I genuinely know and I've got a large sum of money, but I'm going to explain to you why it was that I thought this was a good bet to make and that some of the fallacies that have occurred uh, with respect to the discussion of, of the predictions that came in advance of the vote. Now, the first thing to say is that we knew consistently that the polls had shown about a 2% uh, lead in favour of Remain uh, on average, and that was very much the case up until uh, the, the, the day of the vote itself. There would be variations, of course. Um, now, but what do we know about the polls? We know two things. First of all, that they were proven to be unreliable in last year's general election, and that the pollsters have been working desperately to find new met methods that they think will work, but have not clearly not perfected those. Um, and also, we know that, in in particular, they didn't know how to poll for this type of event because there hadn't been a referendum on of this type for on this question for of course 41 years and so and in fact the pollsters were so uh, unsure of their own methodology that they wouldn't even do a formal exit poll because they, they were so uncertain and if you can't make a prediction on the basis of what people who have actually voted uh, then what chance do you stand with, with respect to making a prediction? And of course this 2% uh, lead, is apparent 2% lead, was really kind of margin of error stuff. And so it was possible to work out that, um, that of course, uh, one might be able to profit from the, uh, fr from the uncertainty, the, the, the chance uh, of an upset. And now, of course, the other thing which everybody consistently said throughout was that the financial markets and uh, the bookies, the bookies odds, were showing a strong chance of remain. Um, but again, uh, you know, this was sort of tempting, but um, fallacious reasoning, really, because although it is the case that in the past there have been occasions where the bookies' odds have, have proved superior to polling, there's no inherent reason, I don't think, why that should be the case. Why might it work? Well, the theory, I suppose, is that this is kind of the wisdom of crowds, that you've got a lot of people um, putting their money where their mouth is, and perhaps on the basis of the um, you know, the people that they've talked to, their friends and neighbours, and their knowledge of those people's voting intentions. So the theory sounds good, and yet, in fact, I think this is this, there's no inherent reason why uh, this should be more reliable than opinion polling, because it very much depends on the uh, you know, the makeup, uh, the geographical spread, uh, the class. Uh, status uh, of the people who are actually place, placing the bets and therefore if you don't know that I think it's very unwise to assume um, that uh, th this is this is superior especially when you think that on top of all that once you get this narrative going about the superiority of uh, the bookies odds then of course people think well if you want to make money then of course everybody knows uh, everybody who's already placed a bet um, knows more than I do, I can make money through following the crowd. So the question is, is this betting actually uh, you know, the wisdom of the crowd, or rather is it perhaps the foolishness of the sheep? Let's come to the financial markets. Now again, it's very surprising to me that people of a sort of a progressive or liberal disposition uh, should have believed this story that the financial markets in some way knew, because this is really a kind of a neoclassical, possibly neoliberal theory about um, the superiority of, of markets, that every, that every price reflects all the information that is out there, and that therefore, any uh, at any given time, the price of sterling uh, is wholly rational. We can see that if this, from last night's events, this is absolutely untrue, because we saw at the point where the YouGov poll was released that put uh, remain four points ahead, the pound suddenly shot up uh, to, to one dollar fifty. Now it's clear that in fact, uh, you know, the financial markets didn't have information that was available to 
uh, that was not available to everybody else. They were just watching Sky News like everybody else and, and, and placing their bets on that basis. So I think the, uh, the supposedly superior knowledge or wisdom of the financial markets and the, and the betting uh, uh, and the bookies has been um, has, has been thoroughly exploded. Now, other things which gave me a hunch, um, quite aside from the experience of the of the general election last year. Um, well, I saw a lot of people on Facebook expressing uh, I was, what was clearly overconfidence, using phrases such as. Um, if, if you know, it is, is unquestionably true uh, that that Remain is going to prevail, uh, and this is always a, a Remain victory has always been uh, you know, the, the likely outcome. Uh, well, I didn't see those people. Uh, I hope I'm not doing them any, any injustice, but I didn't see those people out campaigning. No, no particular evidence that they were doing that. Um, uh, similarly, even if they really believed that and they wanted Remain to win, they should have been arguing uh, that it was still touch and go in order to uh, reduce other people's complacency and encourage people to get out to vote. Um, other things. I don't think that the, uh, the, the the murder, tragic murder of Joe Cox changed anything. I don't think it shifted sentiment. Um, People simply, uh, you know, after after the pause in the campaigning, they, they simply carried on where they had left off. Um, equally, I think that um, uh, it's very difficult to read Twitter, actually, in the sense of, of understanding the significance of it all. But some very strange things, uh, I would say sort of delusional things, were said by quite a number of Brexiters uh, on Twitter. And that I think was was a genuine reflection of a wider national mood. And, and equally, I think there are clearly two factors: clearly, genuine fear with respect to uh, immigration and the, and the genuine racist sentiment that had been worked up. People did react to that, but also I think that they reacted to the more, uh, in some ways, more positive uh, account that the. Um, uh, the, the Brexit camp were pushing about this is a this is a great moment for sort of national confidence. We should have faith in ourselves. We should stride boldly forward into this entirely uncharted future. Um, and so, uh, to, to sum up, uh, the polls were clearly dodgy. There was nothing obviously superior about the bookies' odds or the, the financial markets um, uh, that. There was complacency on the Remain side. The ground game, with the exception of, of some places, uh, such as such as parts of Manchester, was not good enough on the Remain side. Um, and and finally, I think that you know, looking over the very long run, this may seem a bit cynical, but looking over the very long run, nobody consistently lost money voting uh, uh, by nobody consistently lost money by betting against the progressive instincts of the British people.